Okay, so this is going to be a video on what to name your organic compounds, which are branched and cycloalkanes. Okay, so let's start with the <coughs> cycloalkanes, as they're the easiest. So we're going to have something like this. Uh, that's not very good. It's a little bit better. That's a cycloalkane. We're going to have something like this and something like this. Okay, so what are we going to call these things? <clears throat> Alright, so you just want to start by counting the number of carbons that are in the ring. So this one has six carbons. <clears throat> you call an alkane that has six carbons hexane, but this is a ring, so you call it cyclohexane. It's just that simple. This one here has one, two, three, four, five carbons, so you'd call this pentane. But now it's a ring, so a cyclo in front. One, two, three, so you know that is a propane, but it's a cyclopropane, so you put cyclo in front. Nothing very difficult at all. <clears throat> okay. So let's move on to branching here. All right, so let's take a compound that looks like this. And now let's name it. So first thing you're going to want to do is identify and number your longest chain. So our longest chain is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six carbons long because you can't have longer than six carbons if you go start from here or if you end from here it doesn't matter six is the maximum that you can have okay so now we're going to identify our substituent or our branch group so it's whatever is in there we see that it's one carbon and we call one carbon methyl okay so now we name our six carbon chain which is going to be a um, hexane. So it's not just any hexane because it has a methyl group. Um, now you have to distinguish the methyl on this carbon and this carbon because methyl hexane could refer to um, a hexane with a methyl coming off of the second carbon or the third carbon. So you have to distinguish between two and three by putting the two in front. You could start numbering from over here, and then you'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 methyl hexane. But you wouldn't use that because 2 is smaller, and just by default, you use the smaller number first, all the time. Okay, let's <clears throat> get out another example. Let's use basically the same thing. Ugh. 1, 2, 3, Okay, so let's name this. So again, start numbering. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can't have uh, longer than six, no matter where you start from. So yeah, six is going to be the longest. Identify your substituent which in this case we have two. We have one here, we have one here. Both of these are methyls. Methyl, and this one is also a methyl. <coughs> okay, so then again we name our longest chain, which is going to be hexane. And then you have methyls branching off of them, so we're going to put methyl but because you have two methyls, you put dimethyl. If you had three, you'd put tri, four, you'd put te tetra, five, you'd put penta, and so on and so on. And then again, you have to number them. So you see this one could be one, two, three, four methyl. So it could be two, four methyl, or it could be one, two, three, four, five. So it could be three, five methyl, or two, four methyl. We're going to go with two, four because the numbers are smaller. So two, comma, four, dash, Dimethylhexane is the correct name for this compound. Okay, 
Uh, I've already drawn and numbered this one for you. It's a little bit harder. So let's identify the substituents. Or actually, um, the longest carbon chain that you can have is from 1 to 12. No matter which way you go, you can't get a longer chain than that. So now we're going to start naming. Um, okay, something that I just noticed is actually you can get the identical chain, but just for clarification sake, I'm going to delete this. No, I'm going to delete that group just for clarification sake and put this up there. All right, so now let's name this thing. So 12 is the longest chain, can't have longer than 12 carbons. Um, and now we're going to identify our substituents. So we see that we have one of them here, one of them here, one of them here, and another one over here. Okay, so we see that this one has two carbons, so this is an ethyl. This one has four carbons, so it's some sort of a butyl. And you know this is a T-butyl, because you memorized that. This has three carbons, so this is a propyl of some sort. And you've also memorized this is a isopropyl. And this one here, it's a benzene ring attached to a carbon chain as a substituent, which you've memorized we call a phenyl. Okay, so let's start numbering these things. You see here that um, no matter which side you start numbering from, you're going to get a 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so no matter what, you're going to have one on the 4 and one on the 9, no matter which side you start from. So it doesn't matter which side you start numbering from. Um, in this case, yes, it still does. Because immediately after the 4, you have a 5 and a 6. Whereas if you started from here, they wouldn't be on the 5 and the 6. They'd be 4, 7, and 8. So because those two are um, smaller, if you start numbering from this side, you start numbering from this side. Okay, so let's name our 12-carbon chain. You know 12 carbons is dodecyl. Uh, that's definitely something Todd went over, is how to name longer chains like that. And we're going to have our isopropyl, t-butyl, ethyl, and phenyl. Um, for the purpose of this class, Chem 100, it doesn't really matter what order you name put these in, but in other classes, such as when you get to organic chemistry next year, you're going to have to start putting these in alphabetical order, but that's kind of tedious, so for this class, you don't have to worry about putting them in alphabetical order. So let's just start anywhere we want to. So let's go T-butyl first. So what's T-butyl? T-butyl is on the 6 carbon. So it's going to go 6 T-butyl. Um, okay, so that's our T-butyl. Let's name the isopropyl next. That's off to 4. So we have 4 isopropyl. We have a phenyl off to 5. So 5 phenyl. Um, and then we have our ethyl group off of the ninth carbon. So that's going to be 9 ethyl. And then, no, this isn't going to be dodecyl because the dodecyl isn't a substituent. The dodecyl is the main chain. It's going to be dodecane. Okay, so that looks, it, it looks complicated to name, and especially from the name being, what's that, like 30 characters long, looks pretty difficult, but once you break it down into its individual parts, it's actually not too, too bad. Okay, so actually I'll do one more example here with a um, cyclo, which, which has branches off of it. Okay, so let's take this 
with that, that, and that. Better yet, let's... No, that's fine. Okay. So here, we see that we have a cyclohexane ring, because you've counted those carbons. And you see there's six of them. So it's a cyclohexane. Um, but now, where do we start numbering these from? Um, with a cyclo, you can start numbering from any point that you want that will give you the lowest number. So we can start numbering from here as 1, 2, 3, or we can start numbering from here as 1, 2, 3. Alright, so doesn't matter which side we start naming from because we're going to have 1 and a 2 and a 3 no matter which side we start. In this case, yes, it also does matter. You want to give the lowest number to the heaviest group. So we have the lowest number given to this group and the highest number given to a smaller group, which is what you're going to do if the numbers are all equal. Okay, so now let's identify our substituents. So this one here is one carbon. Methyl, this one here is one carbon. Methyl, this one here you know is a cyclo propyl, and we know this is a 6-carbon ring, so it's going to be a cyclohexane, but it's a cyclohexane with a 1-cyclopropyl and a 2-3, don't forget the dye, everybody always forgets the dye, methyl, cyclohexane. All right. That's it for alkanes. Next we'll do, I guess, alkenes. Uh, yep, alkenes will be next. Go to... Bleh.